So we watched the movie Alien from 1979. What do you think? It is a classic science fiction. It is 8 out of 10 for me. I'm leaving room on the top just in case there's other things. Um, it is too scary for me. Yeah, I, it, I have memories of being a kid in it. It's so, so scary. Um, I found my favorite scene. 74 minutes in, we'll see it later today. Um, I found my favorite scene. A cool, slow burn, kind of scary. Not like not just jump scares, not just like horror stuff, but like you feel the vibe, you feel the mood. It's super brilliant. Um, the way the design, the sets are designed, it feels real, feels alive. And and one of the best parts is that there's so much more left in the universe. Like there's teasers and parts that uh, of information that we could later weave into more stories. Like, I mean, I know the answer. There's more movies, but super cool, super cool that we can like live in the universe and imagine what could be there. What did you think about the movie Aliens? Uh, I give it a 9 out of 10. I think it's one of my favorite movies of all time. Not perfect, though. There's some issues, but generally fantastic movie. Uh, the set art character design is fantastic. The slow burn and ambient atmosphere of the, you know, the whole show, the spacecraft, the landing, all of it feels great. You know, I'm into it, even though it's a little slow. Uh, there's so much amazing potential lore in the universe. Um, and the Ripley and the other characters feel real. Like this isn't, you know, Buck Rogers or anything. This is a couple of workaday people doing their job and put in a terrible situation. So it feels real. Uh, the conspiracy, the only drawback I think is the conspiracy with the Android Ash feels a little forced to me. I think I would have preferred the story if it had been more happenstance and less conspiratorial, but maybe that's personal preference. That's why I lock it down from a 10 out of 10, to 9 out of 10. Uh, and the ending is a little long, but generally it's a great ride, great art design, great set design, great characters, great sci-fi movie. Love it. Nine out of ten for me. Mm. All right, let's get into it. See why it's it's withstood the test of time. Oh, viewer discretion advised. There's going to be some scary shit, scary stuff in here. Yeah. All right, so let's start out. We're on the um, the Stromo, and where are they? Where did they uh, come out of hyper hyperspace? Faster than light somehow. Faster than light something. Calling Antarctica traffic control. Do you read me, Antarctica? Over. So they're looking for Antarctica traffic control right away. They're not in the Earth system, but that's the first thing they asked for. Pretty cool. Hmm. I, I think they th they come out of hyperspace and they're like they think they're in Earth system, right? right. So then they're like messaging it. Then they figure right. out they're not. All right, that's right. Okay. okay. You sure to say the two reticuli. The hell are we doing out here? That's not our system. I know that. So Lambert here says. Zeta, retic Zeta 2 Reticuli, mm -hmm. when she says that, which is an actual binary star that we looked up. Hmm. So, so they had just come from a mining mission out at Zeta 2 Reticuli in the Reticulum constellation, and we looked it up. It's actually down south. It's on the southern hemisphere, I guess, out in space. Mm -hmm. And so it totally makes sense that they're messaging the South Pole because, mm -hmm. like, if the Earth is rotating, the spots, like anywhere on the equator, you'll have intermittent communications. Mm -hmm. So you put radio stations on the bottom of the Earth and the top of the Earth, and then that way they communicate with all four pi at all the time. Super clever. Yeah, super clever. So cool location and consistent with looking for Antarctica relay station. Yeah. Pretty cool. Detailed. Yeah. People have really thought about this. Mm -hmm. And so they've come out of hi hyperspace. Yeah, and sure. uh, they don't know where they are, and people are like, what the hell is the situation? So here Captain Dallas explains. Mother's interrupted the course of our journey. Why? She's programmed to do that should certain conditions arise. They have. Seems she has intercepted a transmission of unknown origin. A transmission? What kind of a transmission? Acoustical beacon that uh, repeats at intervals of 12 seconds. SOS. I don't know. Human? Unknown. Well, I hate to bring this up. It's not my contract to do this kind of duty. And what about the money? If you want to give me some money to do, I'd be happy to. Uh, Right. There is a clause in the contract. I don't want to hear. We don't know this. I want to go home and party. <laughs> so this is this to me is fantastic because me, I'm like, oh, aliens. This is cool. Let's go explore. But uh, Parker is not particularly enthusiastic about it because this is his job. He's not out here to put his life on the line. I'm not here to mess around with unknown alien stuff. Like I'm right. here to get paid. Like <laughs> we're doing mining. Like get me home. He wants to go home. He wants to party. It actually makes a lot of sense. It makes the the crew feel real. Mm. Uh, it's a great scene. Because uh, they really don't have that much enthusiasm about going down, so it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's not my contract to do this kind of duty. And what about the money? If you want to give me some money to do, I'd be happy to. There is a clause in the contract. I don't want to hear. We don't know that. I want to go home and party. <laughs> I love it. 
One of the things I thought I heard was that is they they got a repeating signal at twelve second intervals, and then they're like they're like, oh, is this an SOS? Like, how could you know that? Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I think they in a later scene, mother actually deciphers the signal, which we're like, how in the world? So. Yeah, we'll talk about that later because uh, that might be have some implications. Maybe they slipped up and didn't realize that the company already knew what it was. All right. Okay, so they're entering the atmosphere of the moon where the derelict spacecraft is. Let's uh, watch this. I didn't think this was realistic. First glance. 20 seconds. 18, 17. So that looked really fast to me, given that they're moving from into orbit. That's a we're moving through this those squares over a course of maybe ten seconds. That's a lot of motion. That felt really fast to me. Mm. Two seconds. Eighteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. 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 Eighteen.
which is Ripley in this case, is coming down, which is only going to cause tension with the mechanics down here doing the maintenance. I'm like, ugh, we can't just uh, do it that's ourselves. Right. That's like, right. I have to deal with management here. So this makes it feel more real that there's still this tension between the guys down below and management up top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So interesting. What the hell is she coming down here? What the hell is she going to do? She has like this engineering degree. She's going to just yell at me. Like, I know how this machine actually works. Like, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the atmospheric composition. Ah, clearly. Look at that atmospheric composition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nitrogen, high concentration of carbon dioxide, crystals, methane. I'm working on the trace elements. Rock, lava base, deep cold, well below the line. So... The atmospheric composition is pretty cool. Inert nitrogen. Inert nitrogen. A concentration of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide crystals. Crystals, methane. Methane. I'm working on the trace elements. Rock, lava base, deep cold, well below the line. I mean, carbon dioxide crystals, we're talking dry ice. This is some cold stuff. Yeah, I'm talking well below the line. Well below, yeah. What is the line? What, <laughs> we what is the line? We know. It's some line that apparently if you're below it, you're well, you know. Something's not survivable. Oh, it's like the, yeah. So maybe there's like a temperate climate survivable mm -hmm. sphere. Like mm -hmm. if there's too much pressure or too much temperature or too much or not enough temperature, then it's like below the threshold of survivability. Right. Got to put your suits on. Got to put your suits on at all times. Got to be mm -hmm. well insulated. Otherwise mm -hmm. you'll die. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ash reading the screen reminded me of like, like, like the Matrix where <laughs> he's like, all I see is a blonde, a redhead, brunette. Yeah, so how, how is he deciphering this information? He's getting right. atmospheric information from just this randomly list list of numbers with some indentation problems. So so we know that he's an android. Mm -hmm. But the, at this point in time, the rest of the crew doesn't know that he's an android. So I wonder if they just think he can like read numbers and everyone else is just like, yep, yep, nitrogen, uh, carbon dioxide crystals. <laughs> <laughs> he's just spouting stuff off. I, I, like, inter I interpret it as like maybe they can read it too. Because look at them. They're sitting here. They're like, oh yeah, of course. I see doubt. Doubt on Kane's face. That's so much faking <laughs> it. That's so much faking it. Like, <laughs> Have like, you done this at work? Where you're like, somebody says something, you're like, yep. yep. I've definitely done that at work. But this would be absurd. It would be like, well, how, Ash, what is this? <laughs> yep. How... <laughs> You told us three things from atmospheric composition, and you've got like 100, 200 numbers here. What's going on? <laughs> He's doing some massive like subtraction. And it comes out to be three. Oh, that's oxygen. <laughs> 16. Oh, come on. Right. And none of them are like percentages. They're all in the thousands. Maybe there's one in the hundreds here. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything that's a percentage. So somehow he's doing some massive calculations in his mind. Okay. Okay. This is the first red flag. He should be an android. That's right. Crew's not paying attention. Mm -hmm. Ripley has gone down to help out to help out. Manage. Brett and Parker do maintenance, even though Ripley can't really help. And so the way, especially the way Parker gets revenge is to turn on, I call it steam pipes, but I guess it can't be steam because it's going to, it would burn. So it must be dry uh, carbon dioxide, maybe carbon dioxide, maybe paper. Yeah, let's see. Hey Ripley, I want to ask you a question. If they I find what they're looking for out there, does that mean we get full share? He's still going on about the shares and the contract. I get it. He's pissed. Sorry, right. Parker. You'll get whatever's coming to you. I'm not going to do any more work. We get this straightened out. You're guaranteed by law to get a share. What? Why don't you just f off? What? If you have any trouble, I'll be on the bridge. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So clever. I mean, su super sneaky. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, they don't want her down here, so they make it as super noisy and, and difficult to see, as That's inconvenient right. as possible for and her. So she's like, I want to leave. And then she does. If you're here, we're going to be talking about shares. Like, <laughs> Go away. Yeah. And it's also a test. Like, if she were truly had mechanical experience, she'd be like, why are you turning on the, the That's jets? Right. That's right. Since she doesn't recognize that the jets are turned on, they're like, she doesn't know what she's doing. Get out of here. That has a really good read. These guys are clever. They're clever, yeah. And they're still talking about the shares. <laughs> I mean, if all your entire crew was getting full shares and you were getting three quarters, I'd be upset too. I'd be pissed. I think they're even at half. They're at half. Yeah, yeah. I'd be pissed. Yeah, I'd be pissed. Yeah. Even though you sign the contract, it's like you feel cornered. 
You're mm-hmm. literally stuck on the ship. That's right. Another readout. This time it's Ripley. Like, how is she deciphering this on screen? Like, what the, what the, what? <laughs> <laughs> this, this, is, this is worse than just using letters. <laughs> How could you, a human, decipher that? I mean, you gotta, it's like flashing at you and... I mean, so if there are 26 letters in the alphabet, we can map that into a binary code for every letter. But why would you do that? <laughs> you, you just you just use words. We have them. That's right. Or is it an image? So you're like, okay, that's clearly red. And then that's green. And then that's a tree. Like, what? <laughs> no way. <laughs> I mean, I guess if she's trained up on... Binary readout, but why make it so difficult? Why did you do that? No. <laughs> She's just chilling. Maybe it's a display to let the user know that the computer is doing something. <laughs> it's actually like not doing anything. It's some programmer was like, like let's give him a bunch of ones and zeros so that people think it's doing something. Right. <laughs> I mean, she's just chilling. She's waiting for it to do its calculation. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> On the side of the derelict ship. The Dallas reaches inside to the body and he says that it's exploded from the inside. Okay, first off, look at this awesome set. God so damn. Cool. It so feels cool. alien. Like what the heck is this? So so un like all the curves are organic and mm. non straight, rigid. Doesn't feel doesn't feel right. right. And there's no you know, like walking on it is really uncomfortable. That's right. It's almost like the aliens didn't walk on it because they don't have a floor. Like so, it's still their, so. Or weird. their feet are so big that the things that trip us to them, they just step over. No big deal. No big deal. Yeah. It's been dead a long time. Looks like it's grown out of the chair. Bones have been out with, like he exploded from inside. So this looks so very realistic. I wondered, like, did they take bones from, like, a, an elephant, like, like, mm-hmm. and just paint them up? Is that real? Like, I mean, it looks okay. Is it a real alien? I don't think so. <laughs> but <laughs> what I meant to say, God damn, what what I meant to say was they're. I think you're right. I think they're real bones representing the alien bones I see. instead of computer graphics. So it, oh. it has this like, like real dusty feel to it, organic. Mm-hmm. Instead of that, I don't know. It's like a little too smooth. Something the when uncanny it be, valley CG where it's yeah. like, yeah, it, it doesn't look quite right. Something is right. wrong about the light. Whereas here, it's a real object. These like the practical effects yeah. were were actual objects. Right. So it looks great. It looks fantastic. Even so, so this exploded out portion. I guess this is like the rib cage exploded out, and this is the spine. Mm-hmm. It feels like it's it's like you can imagine how it went down. Right. Yeah. 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 So cool. Also, look at the size of that hole. Size of the what? Size of the hole. So for humans, it comes out of a chest. Right? Oh yeah, that's right. It's like this big. So I wonder if the I wonder if the alien that came out of that was a big boy. Big. Yeah. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. The aliens must have. Better compatibility of gestation with this species. Mm-hmm. Curious. Like he exploded from inside. So cool. Mm. Okay, <laughs> he touched it. What are you doing? So, 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 there's you find this alien ship with these alien bodies, and like you touch it with your glove. I mean, that's better than touching it with your hand. But this is the glove on your environmental suit. Like, if there is a problem, you have to pull off the glove. Pull off the glove. You've lost the seal in your environmental suit. Mm-hmm. So 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 let's make some rules for exploration. Mm-hmm. And it's don't touch things with your glove. It's almost like you should either put on a disposable, like a glove on top of the glove that you, can, glove you can throw away. Or the glove itself is disposable. So when you go back to the airlock, you just discard it and it gets burned or something. But I think glove on glove plus disposal is even better. Oh, heck. Yeah. I, I gotta, I, why not a walking stick? You got a walking stick in this weird mm-hmm. terrain, so it helps you stabilize, and you just mm-hmm. poke at things with it. If you have to mm-hmm. abandon the walking stick, you just let go. Or maybe one of those um, those pincher grabber guys. Like mm-hmm. you want to grab something far away, you have this extended arm. Then you can grab things, manipulate them, and then if there's a problem, you just let it go. So you need Wrong. like a space exploration Swiss Army stick. That's right. It's like a walking stick, a pokey stick, a grabby stick, 
on all kinds of something stick. A poly stick. Yeah. So you can explore without contaminating your suit, which could cause problems in the airlock or... That's right. Yeah. But don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. it. Especially, look how... Look look at this. There's like dried goopiness and bony stuff. I can almost feel like a spider web in here somewhere. I don't like it. Uh, Yeah. Now it could be like in the crevices of my glove, and I don't know. (laughs) Don't touch it. Don't touch it. That also goes for like if you're in the rainforest now. <laughs> don't right. don't touch things. It's also like yeah. So if you you actually I think you have a fear of goopy, grimy, moldy, algae, growthy things mm-hmm. because it can contaminate you. So let's let's listen to that. <laughs> yeah, you get a little creepy feeling in the back head. Don't touch things. Don't touch things. Yeah. So cool. That's a shot. I guess here's the spine. And then here's the rib case that's been blasted open. Mm. Very cool. Cool. And they're huge. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So this is the code. This is the code deciphered. This is where Mother tells Ripley that it was a, a distress beacon. Ash, that transmission. Mother's deciphered part of it. It doesn't look like an SOS. It looks like a warning. Wait a minute. How? <laughs> Right. Converting to human languages, like here that are current, that are active here on Earth, is already a challenging task. It's a challenging task because they have different sounds, they have different different words, they have different meanings, they have different sentence structures. And, and you need these huge training sets to get the AI working. Right, and that's that that's with a live language with mm-hmm. specialists that, that understand how to translate it. Here with this like beacon, which you're interacting with just the signal, you're not getting feedback of like. Does this mean door? Does this mean apple? Like you just you just get whatever message it sends. I have no idea how mother could have figured out that it would be a warning. Right. So this is a truly alien message. Right. So how in the world is mother going to decipher this? We thought maybe this is a, a you know a slip in slip of information a spillage, because Ripley could have said, well, how is mother deciphering this? Maybe mother has seen this before. That's right. Does that mean the company knows? Maybe maybe. The uh, the company had already sent a ship before. The people went down. They're like, it wasn't a distress beacon. It was a it was a warning mm-hmm. because everyone died. And so then now the company and therefore mother was like, hmm, I think this was a warning. Mm-hmm. And so maybe Ripley asked mother a question in a way that it, mother said, oh yeah, it's a warning. So like like in a way that it wasn't restricted information. Mm-hmm. So we th- we think we think that mother slipped here and she mm-hmm. almost spilled the beans. Right, and Ripley. Well, Ripley's talking to Ash, so Ash isn't going to spill the beans because right. he's in on it. He's in on it. So Ripley could have been like, hmm, how does she know? And then Ash would have had to make some excuse. Um, yeah, maybe is this is a slip up by Ripley. She didn't think about it. Mm. She's like, mother's so smart. I guess okay. she can do that. The AI, super smart, right? Super smart. Yeah. Check the AI. Well, this is the inside of the derelict ship. And we were talking about this, and we're like, what what the hell kind of ship is just empty? Right. I guess first thing is, can we find the person in this picture so we can yeah. see the scale? So here he is. Actually, that, let, me, let, me, uh, let me draw something here. So we can... I'll draw... This is... Uh, I'll draw the, uh, just a straight line. And let's make it... Let's make it red so we can see it. Okay. And... Let's make it super thick, okay. and that'll be our scale. Cool. So, so that's, there's, there's that's our Kane, right? So yeah. Kane is like maybe five, eight, five, ten, somewhere in there. Yeah. And so this cavern, we looked it up. Um, this this mm-hmm. is the ship belongs to the engineers, mm-hmm. and the engineers we said was like the four, eight to fourteen feet. We so, said eight to fourteen feet. We looked it up on the wiki. So yeah. it's kind of close to Kane's height, maybe double. Mm-hmm. This. Cavern is huge. Right. So even yeah. So if it's double the cane's height, which is the red in this picture, the engineer is still tiny in this cavern. So like, why would you do that? Like like if you walked along the bottom, mm-hmm. trying to get from the front of the hallway to the back of the hallway, you'd have to like go up and down all these bumps. Right. Seems super strange. And if you had cargo in here, you you couldn't roll it because you're like up and down these bumps. Mm, like what the no heck? Good. So what? Well, how? Maybe they have hover. Maybe they have hover tech. 
Because if it's hover cool. tech, they don't have to worry about the bumps. They're just mm-hmm. going to float over it. Mm-hmm. And then you don't want a super narrow tunnel because mm-hmm. then your 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 cart is going to bump into everything. Yeah. So you actually want a big cavernous open mm-hmm. space. So these ribs here are like the structural members. Mm. And then you fill in, this is like a cargo ship. You can slide hovering cargo things inside this colon. <laughs> I see it. I see it. And you it just like line them up. Like a constipated colon. Yep. And then that's your cargo, and then off you go. You're dropping off the package. <laughs> so you're you're hovering or floating or mm. confining the cargo in these sections. <laughs> sections. God damn it. Um, and you don't need to worry about the surfaces because there is no floor because it's that's all right. free floating. You're moving in space most of the time anyway. Um, so that's kind of cool. And then I guess the eggs are here because this is an infestation. This is not designed yeah, yeah, for yeah. eggs. Yeah. The, the mother alien that we don't see in this movie mm-hmm. thought it was a nice place to nest them. It actually looks yeah. pretty comfy in there. I guess in Aliens, there's a queen mm-hmm. and she lays the eggs, but we don't see her anywhere here. So maybe she's out of the ship and she's created a new nest. I don't know. I don't know where the, the queen is here. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting uh, colon shit. Colon, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean... I see it. I see it. I see it. So Kane goes down into, I guess we'll go, we go back to this picture. Kane is here. He re- like repels and walks down over here and checks out one of these eggs. And bad procedures, but at the same time, how is he supposed to know that this face hugger was going to acid etch through his... No way. It's reasonable. His mask, his face. Yeah. Let's watch. Can we, so, can we take a moment and appreciate that that egg? Yeah, it, it's, it looks real. It looks, it looks it looks real. It looks like it's real, actual meat. Yeah, like a chicken. Like, that, yeah, it it creepy. looks gooey and creepy and slimy, and it's got like biological components to it with maybe veins. I guess so, yeah. I mean, white. Blood delivery, something. Yeah. This white, though. Fluid, yeah. And goop everywhere. And this looks like maybe lipids. Yeah, yeah. Like, it just looks like... It's like similar, but not human. Like, clearly not breaded, blooded, but it's kind of similar. Yeah. Gooey, uh. So, uh, it, like, hits you right there in that, that animal fear feeling. Let's bring back practical effects. This is so much better than CG. Right. Especially for something like this. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you would... This sheen, this goopy feeling. Mm -hmm. How would Mm -hmm. you... Wow. Just wow. Uh, I've been clenching my jaw. Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. Let's watch this. Keep going. I mean, this face hugger must be intelligent. It knows when the the potential body is, is... looking at it and when it's getting closer like it did it attacked its face uh, Kane's face it didn't like attack its foot or whatever right Mm -hmm. so this face hugger must somehow be able to see and like know that this alien thing is looking at me right and it doesn't it the face hugger interprets it knows it's alive he knows Kane's alive but Kane is covered in a suit that's inorganic so the face hugger knows to attack the face and then use its acid to get through the face mask Mm -hmm. but then Mm -hmm. stop and attach itself to the face in a different scenario where the face hugger doesn't know that, couldn't figure it out, it like grabs onto Kane's helmet and Kane just grabs it off. Right. Like this thing is super smart. And and it doesn't grab in with claws, it like acids through the surface. Right. So another another alien comes is not human, he might have to use claws or he might have to use some other mechanism. So it's kind of like it's got some intelligence. Intelligence and adaptability. It yeah. figures it out. Right. right. And and bummer for Kane, but also like there's no reason you would expect that to happen. <laughs> like, That's right. Yeah, you might expect it to be maybe poisonous or maybe kind of don't touch it. But why, why, why would you expect this to happen? Yeah, he was a goner from the get-go. Mm-hmm. Quarantine procedures. Ripley stands her ground, but doesn't matter. 
Hey, Ripley. What happened to Kane? We're clean. Let us in. Something has attached itself to him. What kind of thing? I need a clear definition. We have to get him to the infirmary right away. Open the hatch. Wait a minute. 24 hours for decontamination. You know the quarantine procedure. He could die in 24 hours. Open the hatch. If we break quarantine, we could all die. We have to get him inside. No. I can't do that. Ripley, this is in order. Open that hatch right now. Do you hear me? Yes, I read you. The answer is negative. Negative. Fucking ash. Negative. So I really like this scene because it feels like the crew, they're not like a military organization with strict rules. They're kind of just these people nice. working. And so they have a hierarchy, but they're they're not listening to the hierarchy. Dallas should insist, Captain Dallas should insist on quarantine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he's the captain, but he's not, it's not like a military organization. Or, or even like a medical or a science ship where they have like strict quarantine procedures. We're right. used to handling these things. Like here, they're mm -hmm. minors. And like, yeah, we've read the manual. We've heard the quarantine procedures. But like, I've never had to deal right. with it. Like, well, it's off my radar. That's right. And, and my so friend then, is hurt. So yeah. like, get me in. Get him inside. <sighs> yeah. So it would make sense if your friend is hurt to break the rules. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, especially if you don't really understand why the rules exist. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this is a second indicator that the company knows something because Ash breaks quarantine procedures right. kind of right away. And why did he do that? I read you. The answer is negative. It just, it just regards it. <laughs> I mean, so Ripley is in command of the ship now, you know, right? That's right. So, so it's, it's Dallas, then Kane, then Ripley? I think so. And the rule is that whenever Dallas and Kane are off the ship, mm -hmm. then Ripley's in command? Mm-hmm. Well, Dallas wants in, and he's on the ship. <laughs> I guess <laughs> technically he's right there. Is okay. Does that mean does on the ship mean out of airlock and out of suit? It she she didn't say whenever whenever Dallas and Kane are in or past the airlock. She's just not on the ship. He's on the ship. That that's right. But uh, I mean, so this is where it gets a little wishy washy, <laughs> right? <laughs> They don't, yeah. It's not a military organization with strict rules. Like she, he should have to go up to the bridge and relieve Ripley. He should have and to then, stand on the outside, on the surface of the ship. That way, he is on the ship, not in the ship. That's right. Well, what does what does military do? What is do they like? If a if a person who's going to become captain, do they as soon as they you know one foot on the ship? Oh, no. That's my ship now. So my my understanding is. The new commanding officer goes up to the to the bridge where the old commanding officer says, and they say, "Here, I'm here to relieve you." And then the old, the previous person says, "I stand relieved." Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I learned in Star Trek. That's what I learned in Battlestar. Battlestar. Yeah. Battlestar. But I think yeah. that's right. I think that's something like that. So there's some procedure to determine when the power has been transferred. Mm -hmm. Here mm -hmm. we only say when he's on the ship, and he's technically on the damn ship. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, so it does feel like they haven't figured out all these power transfer, right. who's in command right. rules. It's just kind of, they haven't put been put under this kind of stress before. Mm -hmm. So it's breaking down. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And then so the Ash's complete disregard for safety is they didn't even notice because they're so stressed out. Very cool. Okay. So here, let's uh, watch the slap heard around the Nostromo. Got her. <laughs> it's a big windup. Lambert. Lambert. Landed. I mean, she landed that. She landed it. What the f is going on? <laughs> I mean, that was she. She got her square. Mm -hmm. She got the, her hips in it. Let's see where where swung from down low, so you never saw it coming. Right. Boom. Boom. Pa. 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 Pra. Pra. Got her. And that difference in height, she got up, she climbed the ladder, mm -hmm. got up top there. Let's watch that one more time. What the f is going on? <laughs> I mean, Lambert is angry because mm -hmm. because Kane almost died, but yeah. I mean, if she if Lambert had been inside the ship, mm -hmm. then Ripley would have been saving her. I mean, it's really just she's on the wrong side. That's right. <laughs> Don't leave the ship. And then, you know what? They didn't have the conversation about quarantine procedures and what would happen beforehand. So now they're flying by the seat of their pants. Lambert's like, you're trying to kill my friend. Ripley's like, I'm just trying to make the right decision. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see it. Hmm. 
And then we got a quarantine discussion with Ash, since Ash is the one who broke quarantine. Uh, Ripley actually stands up to him, even with his kind of annoying body language. You let him in. I was obeying a direct order, remember? When Dallas and Kane are off the ship, I'm senior officer. Oh, yes, I forgot. You also forgot the science division's basic quarantine law. No, that I didn't forget. Oh, I see. You just broke it. You know, the <laughs> chance of survival was to get him in here. By uh, breaking quarantine, you risk everybody's life. It was a risk I was willing to take. It's a pretty big risk but... for a science officer. Not exactly out of the manual, is it? You do your job and let me do mine. Yes. But he didn't do his job. He did his job wrong. That's right. And actually, her, Ripley's job was command. Mm-hmm. And his job is science. Mm -hmm. So when she gave a command, he disobeyed. Mm -hmm. So he didn't delegate authority to Ripley appropriately. Now he's like, I want my authority to do science. Like, wait, what? Ash. And his, his is so condescending and dismissive. And Ripley has to deal with that. I love it. Ash, if you want to save Kane, then you stay outside the airlock and save him out there. Actually, that's a good point. Do they not have portable medical stuff? You can make an assessment out there. Yeah, right. Right. So. And Something then, fishy. Yeah, all of a sudden, and also here he's like, I'm just obeying orders. I told her, remember? When Dallas and Kane are off the ship, I'm senior officer. So he's like, he followed the order he wanted to follow. Yeah, there it is. That's the way to say it. So, yeah. Don't trust him. Don't trust Ash. I like Parker. Parker is smart. Parker might be the smartest part on the ship. Kane is sick. Freeze him up. Freeze him up. Let's listen. Hey, why don't you guys freeze him? How come they don't freeze him? I mean, if he's got a disease, why don't we stop it where it is? What I think we should do is just freeze him. You can always get to a doctor when we get back home. Nobody addresses this. This is such a great idea. It's it just, we can take care of it. You can get to a doctor and get the best help back on Earth. Mm -hmm. and, no, and everybody just ignores this. This makes so much sense. Say it's going to take six months to get back to Earth, and they think that it's going to, he can survive in this coma for seven months. Well, just, just freeze him. Freeze him anyway. Like, even if he's going to barely survive, just freeze him, and then let the medical people back at Earth take care of it. Right. So nobody, he says he asked the question, I think, three times, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everybody's silent. I think yeah. Yeah. Ash's condescension and dismissiveness has an emotional hold on the rest of the crew that they... Oh. They won't hear the dissent from Parker, even though he's making tons of sense. Because Ash is like the smart guy, science officer. And so when he says something, people mm -hmm. are like believing him. And Parker gets only gets a half a share. I mean, why would you listen? Oof. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so the Lazarus bug, the face hugger jumps on Kane and then Kane comes back. Dallas. Dallas, come and see Kane. Just come and see him. How are you doing? Terrific. <laughs> <laughs> he's like shell shocked. It's weird. Like he's like shaking his head, but like he's back. So I thought about this. I was like, why? Why would it be advantageous? Why would it be like an evolved behavior for something to be parasitic and then let go and then to let the let the host come back? So I guess later in the movie and in the sequels, we see it's actually, they actually want to like capture the person and like stick him to a wall. Okay. And then the face hugger goes onto the person. Okay. And then I guess the person stays alive on the wall and then it just, the, the alien gestates out. So maybe this is a misfiring. They don't have him trapped. I mean, but why, why let the thing come to, why let the human, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the host, come back to consciousness if you're just going to kill it anyway My so I, i'm i'm picturing like it's it's tr the 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 way they the alien wants to do it is mm -hmm. it's it's trapped the 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 host is trapped on in the cocoon or something mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it actually doesn't matter if they're alive or conscious or not because they're trapped mm -hmm. nothing you can do about it so this is not this is evolutionary misfire hmm and maybe this is an old evolutionary like pathway that they mm -hmm. don't do anymore because if Kane had fallen down in like behind the ship somewhere and everyone's like, mm -hmm. he's gone. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Then he comes back a few days later. They're like, Oh, welcome back. Let's get you in the kitchen. Let's feed you up. Mm -hmm. But actually he's got this parasite ready to pop. So maybe it's an 
old evolutionary trick that the mm-hmm. parrot that the xenomorph would use to get people to bring them xenomorphs wow. back to the bring back to the colony but then when the xenomorph now is like we got this whole ship we'll just we'll just set them up in little cocoons and we'll make hosts out of them i see so you're saying it could be the reconsciousness is could be a way to spread themselves so they the hosts become reconscious go spread themselves to different locations and then there's more hosts available mm. for future generations of alien. Maybe. Or I just made that up just now. Yeah, I, I think that actually is a, that's kind of like that fungus cordyceps oh, where it right. like makes it, makes bugs go up a Feel, tree mm-hmm. and then it, the spores burst. Uh-huh. And so it can spread its seed farthest. Mm-hmm. So here, maybe the reconsciousness is Gets helping the- spread the seed of the alien, the xenomorph. Maybe. Sounds plausible. Sounds plausible to me. All right, the famous chestburster scene. Let's watch. Fucking ash. Ash. So I actually, why didn't Parker go for the kill right there? So he's got something like a little knife in his hand. Mm-hmm. Captain Dallas stops him. Oh. And Ash stops him. He gets stopped twice by like the highest people. So we know why Ash wants to stop him uh. from stabbing because he wants the xenomorph to survive and see it, what it does because he's in on it with the company. Mm-hmm. But why does Dallas stop Parker? I don't know. My 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 hunch is that he's just doing like a like shit's happening, like lots of stuff. Like just slow it down. Uh, maybe just a just a gut reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I something see. new. I don't know what to do. Everyone mm-hmm. freeze and then figure it out. Yeah, and that Parker also doesn't know if he's stabbing is the right decision in that moment. So he just right. yields, and then by the time anybody's thought of a different alternative, the thing is thing's gone. Squirmed out of there. God, what a scene. It's, it would be shocking. Eesh. I mean, oh. Imagine being there. Just the, It would just, you'd have nightmares for the rest of your life. The sound, the crunch. Yeah. Right. The screams of pain. Mm-hmm. And this is like their dinner table. Yes, yes. Every meal from for the other trip. It's just, it's just, yeah. No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm going to eat in. Actually, we never see the meat at the table again. Oh, okay. We it only see the meat, and there's like the little cubby holes. Uh-huh. They uh-huh. eat at those cubby holes. That's a good. Mm. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I would eat there. <laughs> Anyone want to eat there? Already? Yeah. So this is Kane's body, and so once the, he's for sure dead, now he's got a hole in his chest. They jettison his body out into space. I mean, I I get it. Like, don't hold on to corpses if they're going to rot next to you. But a like doesn't ask want this body to see like what the xenomorph did to it. And then also B, just freeze it. Like, what's the problem? That's right. And also his family back home might want his body for a proper burial. Yeah. Have the ability to freeze. Ash is going to want to keep him. I didn't understand this. I don't get it. I mean, I guess it's what, like, it's a funeral at sea. Mm -hmm. It's a funeral in space. Mm -hmm. But this is like the first instance, or at least the first known instance of alien-human interaction. Like, Mm -hmm. and the person died from it. That's right. Figured they'd want an autopsy. I wonder if they have shipping lanes, and it's just littered, littered with dead bodies. <laughs> oh, I, I thought mean, you meant I thought you meant body shipping lanes. Like they're like orient the ship, shoot it out to Earth. Like we'll catch up to it when it gets there. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking if everybody's doing these these uh, you know funerals in the in deep space, and they have shipping lanes that ships often go through, mm-hmm. and it starts getting littered with bodies, like FTL might get blasted by a body. Oh, so in, instead of like the bread belt, it's like the blood belt, and it's yeah. like littered of space bodies. Like, oof, oof. oof. So, okay. Besides that, it doesn't make any sense to us. Weird. Yeah. Why? At least Ash didn't push for like let's freeze him. Right. <laughs> Ash is like let's freeze him now. Let's freeze him now. What the fuck? <laughs> this is cattle prod. Cattle prod. The cattle prod. Brett and Dallas. A Dallas. A Brett mm-hmm. has it. But like, why did he have a cattle prod? I always interpreted this as he doesn't have a cattle prod, but he like jerry rigged a cattle prod like thing. Okay. Okay. I but guess, I guess sure. that looks like a cattle prod. 
I mean, they're not like herding livestock on <laughs> there's a, the Stromo. Like, what were they mining? Yeah. Uh, like cows. <laughs> we found a cow deposit on this planet. Yeah. So I always thought the flamethrower, the cattle prod, and the motion tracker were always improvised. Okay. But it's never actually clear. Mm. It's cool stuff. I don't know what this buggy is for. Some kind of mining equipment. Got a camera. Yeah. yeah. Camera. Couple cameras. Mm -hmm. And then also those gas canisters in the back. This yeah. could be for power. Power, yeah. Sure. Very cool. Cool stuff. They have very cool stuff on in this movie. Looks like we have these ventilation pipes. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or maybe like gas movers. Mm -hmm. I wonder what this, this is. This place is like messy and mm -hmm. wires everywhere and not cleaned. It looks like a real like lived in ship, not yeah. like one of these like pristine ships. Yeah. This looks like some kind of engine. Maybe. But, yeah, sure. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird because it has the, the an alien, they have, the Stromo has advanced tech, FTL, mother, but then very low tech things like. Like 1930s yeah. factory stuff. Factory stuff, yeah. So very cool. It's like dripping with oil and. Mm -hmm. And then there's these big doors that have these big panels missing. Right. And there's actually like devices and pipes and who knows what inside. Mm -hmm. And it's in the door. Why, why would the door need to be so complicated? Right. I guess I guess the door could be a lot simpler if it was just solid metal, but then that also makes it heavy and in space. So you try to maximize space by shoving in your door diagnostics devices. Okay. And so that these, these things <laughs> measure the state of the temperature or water pressure or something on the other side of the door. And so then they're visible and accessible and you can maintain them and read them. Okay, I like that. So no wasted space on the Nostromo. And they need a lot of equipment because there's equipment just sort of everywhere. Kind of everywhere, yeah. So why waste the space? And then keep the panels off so we easily maintain right there. Yeah, yeah. I like okay. that. Okay. This is cool. This is an interesting room. You got super heavy things like dangling from the ceiling. Mm -hmm. uh, what is this room for? <laughs> well, they are a mining ship. And okay. these chains, what are these chains for? These chains look like they're attached to come alongs. Come alongs are like, like they're pulleys. So you can move the chain a lot um, with very little force, and then that'll move a chain that's connected to the top of the thing uh, very small distances with a lot of force. So if they're a mining ship, maybe this is mining equipment, mm -hmm. and they like thing? hoist it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. They hoist it up, you drive your truck underneath it, you bring it down, and then you drive it out to your mining station. So maybe this is like a car, like a cargo or equipment loading station. You beep, 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 your truck in, load stuff down, yeah. drive it out. Next truck comes in, load it down, mm -hmm. off it goes. Mm -hmm. How about so, that? Okay. So this is the, this is a piece of a mining equipment. Sure. It's dangling because it's not on a truck mm -hmm. and they're just awaiting next use for the next mining trip. I like it. Seems precarious, but also they're not expecting any jolts or anything. You're just in space, whatever. That's right. That's right. And if they have, they do have, they don't use circular ships for artificial gravity. So they have some kind of advanced artificial gravity. Mm -hmm. So maybe this, this big, I don't know, tower of equipment, they've like dialed down the gravity enough. So it's oh, not so it's light. Yeah, okay. So it's pretty light. Yeah. Sure. Lots of cool stuff on the ship. All right. So they're looking for the little alien guy. It's a horror movie. Never separate. Never separate. It's a cat. Now we might pick it up on the track again. I'll, I'll, I'll go, go and get it. All right, you get him, we'll go Parker. on. Parker's so good. He's so smart. Like, that is, that's a perfectly legitimate reason. But, like, we don't want to keep chasing this cat around. Go get it. Right. But then they set Brent off, Brett by, off by himself. Like, that's a recipe for death. Yeah. Why? Well, I, I mean, I guess the only thing I can think of is they, they're looking for something, okay, so about that big. Mm -hmm. So they're not thinking it's the giant alien that we know. That's right. That's right. They're thinking it's a little thing. So he's not. He's not in any, like, death danger. That's right. But they did see the chest burster. So they know it can it has, be lethal. It has the strength to exit someone's body. That's right. And they don't know if, if that thing can also implant somebody with an embryo. That's right. They don't know no how idea. it works. You have no idea. So actually, don't separate. Don't separate. Go as a team. Hold hands. Be inside each other. Okay, so Brett goes off to find the cat, um, and he touches this thing with his hand. Let's watch. It 
So, yeah, on the planet, they touch the alien with their gloves. What's he doing here? This is even worse. This is touching you with your hand. You have no idea what this thing is. It's just kind of leathery, kind of skinny, scaly something. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. With your bare hand? He doesn't even, like, kick it with his shoe first. Or get a stick. There's get plenty stick. of equipment stick right. around. Get a stick. Get a stick. The Swiss Army stick that we came up with for exploration and, I don't know, molting. I don't know. That's it's right. great. That's right. You put it like a, sh- a, sh- a shoulder, a back sheath on it. You have Everyone has their stick at all times. I mean, there's a reason we get the heebie-jeebies. You get the heebie-jeebies because you don't want to touch crap like this. Right. Go get a stick and then pick it up with a stick. Pick it up with a stick. Be like, what the hell is it? So what is Brett doing here? Rule number two of exploration, don't touch things with your bare hands. That's right. Especially like, if you got the heebie-jeebies. You can see it on his face where he's like, oh, whoa. Yeah. 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 That's exactly right. Listen to that feeling. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Also, this isn't rain. We're in a mining ship. Let's watch. So I see all this equipment here. I see the rain. Okay, rain. It's not rain. rain I see that it's water dripping down. Somehow this seems to be psych- the ship is cycling water up and around. Right. I guess to keep the equipment wet for some reason. Wet, cool, something. Maybe. So I see you know, all this metal equipment mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. oils and grime and dirt. Also from this angle, grime and yeah, dirt. Yeah. I mean, I guess Brett knows that this is supposed to be clean water dripping down. But at the same time, it's intermixed with all this nasty, dirty, yeah. oily. Yeah. You don't want that in your eyes or, something no. like, or in your mouth. Yeah. Right. And I imagine with turning equipment, you get dust. Like with brake dust or, you know, flaking and metal dust. and Or little crumbly stuff from whatever planet they were just mining on. That's right. You just And then they could get in the water and then that's, I mean, it just, it's not like, rain. Like he's stressed out. He wants to splash his water, his face with some water to cool mm-hmm. off. But like, don't do this. Like, it's not rain. It's not clean. It's not from the sky. Maybe he knows he's going to die and this is his final... And uh, yes, so Parker sees it vaguely. So, and, and he's relaying to Dallas how big it was. Let's, how, let's see how big it was. It was, it was big. <laughs> Way bigger. So like they were expecting this tiny little guy that, that can be on a table, but instead it's like this larger than human sized object. Mm-hmm. So my thought was like, where did it get the energy? How did, where did it get the like minerals and vitamins to, to mm-hmm. become big? Right, because what in the animal kingdom, growth from a small animal to a big animal, depending on the animal, I think shortest time we're talking months, right, right, right. of growing and eating and drinking and growing and all that stuff. This thing did it in within hours. And and just what what did it eat? Like there weren't livestock around for it to eat. Or, any, or it maybe there was. Bum, bum, bum. Well, we saw the cattle prod. Okay, that's right. They have the cattle pod for a reason. Maybe there was cows before, and then for the rest of the movie, they don't talk about the cows because, like, fuck the cows. Like, we're getting hunted. Where the alien is not eating machinery. <laughs> Maybe it can eat machinery. It's just like, but the, te- the people are tasty. I'd, I'd rather eat them. Like, but that's I, I can eat the machines. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So the people are not for eating. The people are for reproducing. People, not food. People for fuck. Is that what the alien is doing when it kill? Well, and it affects people. It, because it doesn't kill the people. It takes them back to the nest. So in its own perverse way, mm-hmm. that's how it fucks. That's right. That's how, it, I mean, I don't know how much pleasure it's getting. Hopefully it's a kind and generous lover. But that is how it makes more babies. And so if it eats machinery, that's how it grew. Plenty of machinery. And Oh, and that makes sense in, ter- in terms of like a cosmic stuff. Because like it's very uncommon to find organics, but you can find metal around. Yeah. Right. So in order for it to spread from planet to planet, it needs to eat in organics. And it spreads by using organics. It eats it, or it, it, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, said yeah, it right. Yeah, yeah. It's inorganics yeah. like dirt yeah. and, and, and uh, yeah. you know, rocks or whatever. And then it finds biological things and it... To spread itself. 
So when it's attacking people, it's it's getting sexual pleasure. Yeah, yeah. That's dark. It. That's really dark. Alien life could be... Don't kink shame. Fucked up. I'm kink shaming here because that's terrifying. I mean... I'm undecided. I mean, okay. No judgment because life's going to do what life's going to do. And nature can be horrible and apathetic sometimes. But if that's the viable route for this thing to survive... Fuck that. We can defend ourselves, but we shouldn't be judging. Yeah. I'm not going to judge it for its kinks, but I'm definitely going to kill it. Definitely going to kill it. It it. has to kill me to reproduce. Right. And I'm going to kill it so it doesn't. That's right. That's right. Which is why predators hunt them. That's right. Because they're pissed. That's right. That's right. Did we just break it down? I think that actually actually is. (laughs) That's great. It explains why the alien grew so fast and where Mm -hmm. it got its food. Mm -hmm. It explains why it has this huge desire to hunt people without killing them. Yeah. And that's consistent with how it reproduces in this parasitic way. Hmm. And and also why it has this long old feud with the predators, right? Oh, it's, it's, it probably made babies in the predators, and predators okay. like fuck that. I don't predators like that. are upset about that. Yeah. yeah, no, thank you. It was big. So a little bit later in the film, we see Dallas crawling through the the vent work, and he touches stuff with his hands. No hands. Dallas. You sure? But look around, are you sure that it's not there? I mean, it's got to be around there somewhere. That wasn't like like lean back to relax and he's like, oh, what? Yeah. Like he saw it, looked at it, and he's like, hmm, I wonder what this is. Touch, touch, touch. And isn't this after they found out that the alien has acid for blood? Yup. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Even I, if it was like real mild acid and it just melted his fingertips, like... That's going to hurt. Yeah, keep your fingertips. <laughs> keep your keep your fingerprints. Like keep them. What are we doing? What are they doing? That's right. And even there's acids can eat away certain things and not other things. Good point. So it could be accidentally in a container, right? That or at least this is some kind of concrete or something yeah. where it can't eat through it. But as soon as he touches it, it's like that's right. It looks safe for that material, but your hand is not that material. Right. And he's totally lucked out here. But listen to that feeling. If you encounter a xenomorph with acid for blood and you get the heebie-jeebies by looking at goop, listen to that feeling. If you're in effectively a factory with just machinery and oil, maybe some dirt and grime, but then you're like, hmm, that's gooshy, just don't put your hand in it. Gooshy? Yeah. Yeah, right? That Even <laughs> saying it, you're like, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. But that does lead us to my favorite scene. It's where <laughs> Dallas is being hunted. He's there. So spooky. Oh, God. Ash. Dude. Yeah. It's like super scary, but actually, look, he just wants a hug. Like, actually, actually, right? Why does it want a hug? It's the first step of the mating First procedure. step of the mating process. That's right. It wants to see if you're compatible. Will you hug me in a loving embrace? Can I put a baby inside you? I mean, from the alien, the Xeno, from the Xenomorph's perspective, that might be what he's doing. Right. What he, if it wasn't a warning? It was actually a message of romance out into space. That's right. And to him, he doesn't understand why his objects of affection, who are going to die, yeah, don't yeah. want to die. That's right. It's such a nice experience. I left my calling card out there into space, and you, y'all came to me. Came to me, yeah. And this is a dude. This has to be a dude, because... In Aliens, we learn about the Queen. Right. So this is like a soldier going out there for the Queen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, to spread the Queen's seed. Come, come have sex with my mom. Yeah. So it's, it's it's such a dark idea for how biology and but, nature can be so apathetic. The biology, like, actually is like that. Like, we have instances of That's that right. in the real world where, like, insects will, will put their... their eggs inside inside of other ones like oh yeah oh, what the, oh, yeah and there's God. like worms that like eat stuff from the inside like mm. nature stop that don't Let's be not so do nasty that. jesus yeah. so this is like a super advanced intelligent parasitic worm mm. like oh thanks nature So here we are interacting with Mother and 
And Ripley sends ask mother questions and mother like shuts them down. So mm-hmm. so I had a hard time parsing this out, especially when I was young. Could you like walk us through what was going on here? So let's see. Interface 2037, ready for inquiry. Request clarification on science inability to neutralize alien. Unable to clarify. So I guess they're inquiring with mother. They can't neutralize the thing. What should we do next? Oh, and okay. mother can't say. Uh, so request their request. The crew is requesting an enhancement of data. No further enhancement. The special order is for Ash's eyes only. Okay. Suspicious. Suspicious. Suspicious whenever the one, someone in the crew below the highest ranking person. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then, and then I guess the crew. I think this actually might be Ripley at this time. Does an override. You know, one hundred three seventy five. That's Ripley's number. Is that Ripley's number? Yeah. Okay. And then, so she can override that because of an emergency situation. Okay. And she asks for what special order is, and this is the special order. The Stromo is rerouted to the signal, mm-hmm. or to the new coordinates. Investigate life sworn, gather specimen. Okay, that's the okay. objective. And then here's the th- here's the big one. Priority one: ensure return of organism for analysis. All considerations secondary, crew expendable. So somehow, the company knows either there's multiple of these scenarios out there with this alien or is this, they anticipated this somehow they know they're going the stromo is going to encounter the alien and they had this special order which one was it 937 ready to rock hmm. and they put it into use right away and the crew is expendable i see so there's some sort of backstory about how the how the company figured out what what to expect and they put this order in place in, in anticipation maybe like like why didn't the company just send out a dedicated like science team or or like sample recovery team maybe they can't do that because then the other companies will see like why are you sending a ship out there like we mm-hmm. are also going on together so then they they like they send a mining ship out to a mining location that's kind of you know pretty close along the way and so this was actually all planned from the very beginning it wasn't like it wasn't like mm-hmm. they got to just just call that like let's reroute you like no, no the whole thing was a fake reroute because they knew to come here mm-hmm. and so maybe they know that the the rest of the crew is expendable because they've already lost a crew to it it could be i still don't maybe. quite see why they don't just send a sample retrieval team like a professional stealth team i mean Whalen yutani is a huge company they have resources to to get those hire those type of people hmm. my first thought is and i think this might be a fan theory like is it an experiment they want to see if the thing can take out a crew of humans oh so it, it's it's also useful data to see what it does on its when it when it's let loose oh yeah it could be i see and that would make sense why wouldn't they send a sample retrieval team because they want to get that data and want to get that sweet sweet data about how the alien interacts with people Somebody's fucked up. But then Ripley and the crew blew up the Nostromo, and so then they lost the data. But maybe this might not be the only encounter. I don't know. We'll see. Lots of cool backstory. Mm-hmm. This is towards the end of the movie, and I, there's not many people left. I think it's Ripley, Parker, Lambert are left. And they decided Ripley's going to go take start out the shuttle and start the distress uh, the countdown sequence. And then Lambert and Parker are going to go get, I think it's like fuel cells or something. Yep, get supplies ready. And they know the alien, the xenomorph, is out there and they're making so much noise. Always noise, noise. Playing. <laughs> Lambert, you're like, well, why are you surprised that it came to you? <laughs> you made so much noise. <laughs> I guess they're they're prioritizing speed over noise. They're like, it's gonna find us anyway. Let's just do it, do it, do it, do it. But it's like excessive amounts of noise. Right. Don't be throwing metal cylinders on the ground. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> so I guess Great. the idea ideal is like quick and smooth and careful, but fast. Right. Grab which, it. Which would which place would it, be quiet. Roll it. Grab it. Place it. Roll it. Pop it and bop it. Pull it, pop. Maybe pull you it, pop twisting. it, and pop it. Yep. And that's why we, in the, if you're a 90s kid, grew up in the 90s, they have that bop it game. This is why you learned that. So if you're ever attacked by the xenomorph. That's right. That's right. 
Can you imagine like, like the eject button to jet fighters or like popping bullets and then you're out? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we harp on door shape all the time in science fiction. We're like, is this the best shape? That looks They're super interesting. inconvenient. They're interesting. Like, how is this going to work? Right. And it sounds like nobody else cares. However, we found an example. What? How are they going to get this cart right here with these little wheels over this? Without nope. it being a huge nope. pain in the nope. ass. You can do like the shopping cart thing where you step in the back to lift the front wheels. But that's a basket. <laughs> this, like, <laughs> if you do that with this, all your cargo is going to fall off. It's going to fall off. It's going to rock. And then you got to pick it up. And then it's going to get it's gonna get double caught because there's two lips. There's these these angled bits. So you do it wrong, it slips. Like, now, there are doors like this in the Navy. Mm -hmm. where the, These are bulkheads where like mm -hmm. they, you can seal them so that way your water doesn't transfer between chambers. But what that says to me is then that this is also just not a cargo hallway. It's a people-only right. hallway. People can still, it's like a slight trip mm -hmm. hazard, but it's worth it for the door to be able to close. But it's a trip hazard, but it's at least something someone could walk over. Mm -hmm. With these wheels and these carts, no go. No go, yeah. So this cart, they shouldn't have chosen this cart. That's right. Yeah. So maybe, maybe she's being routed this way because she thinks the aliens are in some other corridor. So could be. she has to go this way. Yeah. But... But this is, an, this is a great example of door shape being like wildly inconvenient. Right. Because now Parker and Lambert are going to have to get on either side of it and hoist it. No good. No good. The self-destruct procedure is so complicated. Let's watch. Pull. Unscrew. Unscrew. Pull. Pull. Lever. Pull. Second lever. Thingy comes up. Walk over here. Flip it up a little bit more. Pop it into place. Look at these buttons. What? How much training do you need to turn this thing on? <laughs> <laughs> and in a tense moment, you got to execute it perfectly. That's right. And there's just this huge array of buttons. It's not like A, B, C, D. It's like complex symbols. Like what? Symbols that could get worn off over time. Oh, oh they gosh. are wearing down. A little bit. A little bit. You gotta screw this thing in, pull it up, open the thingy, push the button. It's like an escape room. <laughs> <laughs> Danger. The emergency destruct system is activated. Okay, so you don't want emergency destruct systems to be too easy. Because okay. you want to have like somebody somebody has to really think about it and be sure. Mm -hmm. So so I like that there was a process to it, mm -hmm. but it all it was also done by one person. Like like what mm -hmm. if everyone the ship was was running well, but Parker's like, fuck this job, I'm not gonna get a full share, like blow this motherfucker up. That's right. He could have done it by himself. That's right. So maybe the way to do it is to make it two two people. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. Isn't it like in three, two, one, Chook. Yeah. But there's so many steps here, like it's so complicated. It's very easy to mess it up. It would be much smoother if they had like a bop it, pull it, twist it. That's right. And Ooh, yeah. it requires a lot of training. And if you're in a particularly stressful situation That's like right. here. <laughs> Actually, so, so, so why would a ship have the option to self-destruct? Like why, why would you even install that? So in the military, if you know the enemy is going to capture your ship, your ship could be turned could be turned over for research purposes or it could be turned over and then used against you as equipment. Yeah. So you scuttle your own ship. But this is a mining ship. That's right. So it's not a military asset. And as far as we know, there aren't aliens. So so it's, it's possible that every ship in the entire Earth fleet has a scuttle option in case like, if you're getting attacked by aliens, like just blow yourselves up. Uh, my other thought is maybe the other corporations, mm -hmm. the competitors, like if they're going to scope out your tech, you also mm -hmm. destroy your ship, maybe? I mean, this is kind of a dystopian future where like Whale and Yutani and some other corporations are more powerful than the nation states. Mm. So it's actually more like corporate war, maybe. Mm. And so we don't want our, if I'm Whale and Yutani, I don't want our expensive ship falling in the hands of the other corporations. Mm -hmm. So I give it self-destruct capability i mean otherwise it's just a mining ship what's why why, why, why blow it up self-destruct yeah yeah i guess another option could be is if if you've like lost control of your ship and you're like drifting towards the earth like the high priority is to destroy your ship don't crash into earth and mess everyone up <laughs> yeah I mean, it's such a specific scenario but <laughs> i'm trying to make sense of it. <laughs> yeah i mean 
I guess, how is your cargo potentially dangerous? I don't know. Say, so, say if you had a bunch of like poisonous stuff or toxic stuff, you're like, we really don't want this in the Earth's atmosphere. So yeah, it'll, it'll mess up. It'll mess up the I ozone see. layer. So like, maybe. So maybe it is. So it's. It would really screw up. Could kill all life on Earth. And so if you ever lose control of the ship for some reason, you can self destruct it, it. Just blow, blow it up. up. Don't worry about it. Yep. And it's such a ginormous explosion that maybe it vaporizes. It's designed so it vaporizes all the mm-hmm. cargo and inert, inerts it. If you just do it far enough away from Earth, then right. kind of whatever. Uh, I'm kind of convinced of that. Okay. 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 Um, emergency lights. Like what? Ripley's trying to get up. Option to override automatic detonation. Three minutes. <laughs> you want like steady dim light or fully bright lights. This is this is the worst possible combination. <laughs> like like it's just your contrast. You just can't see anything. It's like yeah, I have an emergency situation. Blind, 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 blind. Like oh my god, I can't see. But it's not just bright, and I can adjust to it. It's bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. Like <laughs> I can't see anything. All of the time, I can't see anything. <laughs> and keeping situational awareness is so difficult. Oh my god. <laughs> So Ripley is now on the escape shuttle, and this looked a lot like the alien ship, the little alien like attack ship from Independence Day. I see it. Like see when it. Jeff Goldblum and Will Smith are inside the mothership. Yeah, it yeah. looks like this. I see it, yeah. Hmm. Maybe, I mean, we do know that filmmakers take inspiration from past movies. Hmm. I mean, I think Alien took a lot of inspiration from things like Star Wars. So it makes sense. Very cool. Very cool. From a different angle, it looks like a Star Destroyer, maybe a... Rebel A-Wing. Yeah, I see it. Mm-hmm. It's got definitely got the A-Wing-ish shape. Mm-hmm. And from just another angle. Yeah, pretty cool. It's missing a panel. That's interesting. Yeah, weird, right? So so um, I'm guessing that they're like, this is is the escape shuttle. Like, we're never going to use this. Because <laughs> because they have like the main ship plus they have that the big, the smaller ship, which is like mm-hmm. the actual shuttle. This is like an extremely specific escape shuttle. Yeah. So I could totally see this being like, eh, we'll fix it later, like whatever. Right, and this company's like, workers are like, we need to upgrade and maintain the Our shuttle escape. for emergency purposes. They're like, we'll do it later. What? We'll do it later, don't have the budget, whatever. Don't worry about so it. So now it's don't like missing about. panels, the engines are missing pieces. Like if you have to rely on the escape shuttle, like <laughs> the bigger problems are already happening. Like, That's, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I'll get back okay, to work. Like, whatever. <laughs> I totally see it. Waylon Yutani, the company. Hmm. Oh, our last rule. Our last rule for exploration is keep your pants on. Yes, keep your pants on. I know she's she's going into the, the freezer pod. pod. Yeah. But still, I mean, I would take my pants off right before I, I would either get in, take them off, or like take them off, get in. Yep. I'm not going to wander around with my ass crack out in yep. this like cold place and I've just had a harrowing experience. I'm not sure I'd be you know, ass out at that point. I mean, I get it. Like no one else is around in space. Like this whole shuttle is like to herself. It's like her own little house. Like, yeah, like, I don't want to have pants on when I'm home alone either. But like, like there are sharp things around. That's and right. You could, like cold metal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, some scary shit just happened. Like keep your pants on. Keep your pants keep, on. Keep yeah. your pants just on. keep your pants on. Keep your pants on. And then this shuttle safety features. I am unsure. So one of the cool things that Ripley does to immobilize the alien is shoot these this toxic gas into the chamber of the escape shuttle. But why does the shuttle have this capability to begin with? Hmm. So here's a list of things you can that Ripley had an option to vent into the passenger chamber. So we looked up some of this stuff. Super toxic, just, just like holy crap. More and more toxic. And the one she chooses to vent is, so there's a CL here. Uh-huh. So we're one, two, three, four buttons in. So it's the second CL. Something something chlorine. So second, so I see, well, first button, second button, third button, fourth button, second CL. It looks like it's nitrosyl chloride. Let's look that up and chloride. see. Nitrosyl chloride. There it is. Let's look it up. So if we look at this, let's zoom in a little bit here. Looking at this... Uh, the hazard diamond. Mm-hmm. So this is a zero on the flammability scale. What's the yellow again? Uh, reactivity. So say if you have like potassium, you drop into water, it'll react and explode. Okay. And then blue, I think, is toxicity. 
So these these go on a scale of one to four. Is yeah, that right? Let's look it up. So yeah. it's super not flammable. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this picture here. So oh, great! Nice, nice, nice. So the top red triangle zero means it's not flammable. Mm -hmm. I, I guess that makes sense because even though she knows that the alien responds to being burnt, um, but you also don't want to burn up your your shuttle. That's right. So the nitrous oil chloride has a zero on the flammability scale. That's great for Ripley. Smart. And then the yellow is reactivity. Unstable if heated, but you're in space. You're not mm -hmm. expecting it to get hot. So, so she, she okay. chose a one on the reactivity scale. That's okay. pretty good. So it's not going to like cause problems for the shuttle. Right. And then blue. Three. Three is health hazard, and she got a three. So extremely dangerous. Extremely so dangerous. extremely dangerous to yeah. biological stuff. So that's a good choice. She's trying to poison the alien. That's right. Oh, and she's wearing a suit. She's wearing a so suit. She's so she's protected from the biohazard mm -hmm. from the not bio from the from the uh, health hazard, but the mm -hmm. alien isn't. And there's no guarantee that it's going to harm the alien because he doesn't know its chemistry, but it's a great guess. It's a great guess. It's clearly somehow organic, right? And it looks like for the white, we have a W with a slash through it and an OX. Let's see what that means. So W with a slash through it means don't use water. Uh -huh. And OX means it's an oxidizer. So oxidizer is it'll combust if you give it a spark. And then, or, or no, it'll go through oxidation, not oxidation. So I guess it's a fuel, fuel plus an oxidizer plus right. spark gives you. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it, and, and then also use no water. Perfect. You're in space. You're not expecting any water to be around. And and uh, the alien might be made up of water. So if, if it reacts poorly with water hmm. and it gets on the alien and it's made of water like we are, then that could also cause problems. Perfect. I mean, Perfect. it seems like a. On the fly, super smart chemical to use to right. attack the alien. So, she, so Ripley chooses this nitrous oil chloride. So she's protected. It's not flammable. It's unreactive. It's terrible for biological stuff, and it reacts weirdly with water. Perfect. Send it. Send it. Maybe it hits. It affects the alien. It totally does. Great choice. But why does the shuttle have the option to put this stuff into the passenger compartment? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's it's not just like why is it on the shuttle at all? It's like spray it into the passenger <laughs> cabin. Like <laughs> why? why? And how do you want to die? Do you have A through J? <laughs> pick, pick the lethality. Who you're with right now? <laughs> yeah. I I have I cannot even imagine what scenario would they need these gases in the emergency shuttlecraft for? I mean this 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 this, 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 this is the only time. <laughs> okay. So interesting. Okay, okay. Good job, Ripley, on her gas choice. I mm. mean, on the mm. fly, mm. knows her chemicals. Mm. Amazing. So. Our summary. Ripley's yeah. a survivor. She'll yeah. be back. She'll be back. Mm. We'll be watching Aliens next, and we'll see how that goes. Mm. How much does this company know? It's still unclear after the first movie, and actually all the movies. Like, mm -hmm. mm. How much does the company know? What's the bio division doing? You know, what's research development? What are the other companies? What is, what, how do the nations and the colonies and all that stuff, how do they interact? Unknown. Mm -hmm. Jonesy made it off the ship. Will he be back for aliens? That's I hope so. Point. Yeah, very, Jonesy's an important character. Yeah. And uh, are the xenomorphs the ultimate hunters? They may be pretty good here. They're pretty good, yeah. So we'll see where this takes us in the future. See you guys aliens. for aliens.